All right, what's going on guys? My call sign is Blitz, and today we're having a look at my Urban Survival Gear checklist, new for 2022. Now before we jump into it, let me hit you up with a fun fact that you may not have been aware of before. Now, as of 2018, 55% of the world's population lives in an urban area me included. And if you're included, please leave a comment down below because I'd love to hear about your urban survival kit and how it might differ from your wilderness survival kit. But with that being said, I thought, well, hell, I live in an urban environment. I'm here all the time. Why wouldn't I kind of know how to survive in an urban environment that I'm most familiar with versus running off in the woods? So let's go ahead and jump into it. I think you're going to like this one. Okay guys, so the first thing I did was actually pack up all my gear and go train with it. I don't like sitting here looking at stuff that I don't actually use in a real world environment because if I don't get out there and train with it, it's literally just a bunch of ideas and theories until I actually get out there in the real world and use it. So I already had my eye on two different training sites that I wanted to check out, a couple locations I found on Google Earth. So let's go ahead and see how that went. Went through two training evolutions and had a lot of fun in the process. Let's check it out. All right, so we have determined two things in the last uh, 15 minutes of being on the ground. Number one, these little bastards really suck. And I've been stabbed multiple times already. And number two, there's really nothing in the immediate vicinity except for this dirt road right here, which I've seen on the map, where if I track it back that way, it pops out at kind of like a dead end kind of like the back area of an industrial building or complex from what i was able to tell online so i think this is a pretty quick walk let's just scoot down here and see what we can find Okay, it doesn't seem like there's much out here at all except for this old road. But once again, if you look around me, you know, this is a bunch of woods right in the middle of an urban space. And I love these areas for two reasons. First of all, it's woods, it's concealment. People don't want to mess with it. Second of all, you may think, okay, woods, urban area, homeless people. And the answer to that would typically be no because there is like no gas stations, no Walmarts, no hotels, nothing really around this area at all. It's just a big industrial area and that's it. So that makes it perfect. And usually when I'm out here, well actually every single time I've been in areas like this, find no evidence of anybody. Except I did find that chop shop that one time, which was pretty cool. And then sometimes for no particular reason, there's just a block building in the middle of nowhere. So I don't know what was back here. Looks like there's a, what the heck is this? It looks like there's some sort of wall over here. Huh. Any of you guys know what this area or this building or any of this stuff could have served a purpose for? I'm stumped.
Wow, this is pretty cool out here. Oh, we gotta watch out for wires hanging. Not cool.
All right, so there you have it, guys. Access to that location was stupid simple, super easy, and it's not always like that when you're out doing urban exploring like I love to do. So when it is easy to get in and get out, I really definitely uh, appreciate that. Now, with that being said, that location was huge, and I would not want to try to remain overnight there or for any long period of time without having a crew with me to secure that location at least one building right and uh that would be ideal right because um who knows who's there i wasn't able to look at all those buildings i wasn't able to clear all the rooms there were signs of humans everywhere and then some homeless people started meandering through the general vicinity so i figured probably time to hit the road but with that being said those types of structures are everywhere i mean look at this this is all abandoned right here this all abandoned office buildings look at that what did you guys think of that the first site was a little bit of a bust the second site was really good but yes a little sketchy a little dangerous i would not suggest remaining there overnight at all me being by myself no way to secure that location no way to really know who was there i felt like people were there trust me i probably was i just didn't uh, run into them or they just stayed hidden but whatever the case is for me personally that kind of site is good to get into real quick get what i need maybe some firewood some resources whatever and then get the hell back out and maybe with a larger group it might be more viable to try to hold that complex for a period of time or whatever so uh, what are we going to move on to next well let's go ahead and actually talk about when you would use this gear right because i've always had people comment on videos and be like oh i would never use this gear you're crazy like what do you like some sort of mad max nutcase and i would say no not mad max yeah a little crazy but let's just consider some different situations where this kit would come in handy So what does that situation look like? 
Is it, you know, like I am legend type of vibes? Is it a city under siege? Is it the type of situation where maybe, I don't know, it's been a slow, steady decline, a slow collapse of society until finally like the whole world is like California or your area of the world is like California, but like maybe 10 times worse than they are right now, which is saying a lot because they're really effing bad. I mean, when you have gangs of people just going around and taking whatever they want, um, yeah, it sounds like no rule of law. But with that being said, maybe it's a scenario like that. Maybe it's a scenario that's, uh, who knows, um, like uh, Escape from New York, right? Where it's just like vagrants and gangs roaming the streets in charge of everything and people are cowering inside of their houses and their apartments. Or maybe, maybe it's a little less post-apocalyptic. Maybe there's mobs of anti-racist agitators roaming the streets, taking whatever they want from anybody. Hmm? Have you ever seen that before? Yeah, probably not. Um, widespread riots against the government and protest? Yeah, I don't know, maybe, have we seen that before? I think so. Military curfews, lockdowns, detention centers, all these things we have seen before, and we've definitely seen them a lot over the past two years, so really, if you step back for a minute and think, yeah, an urban survival kit actually makes a lot of damn good sense, hmm. So let's go ahead and jump into it, having a look at my everyday carry and the clothes that I wear on my person. Look at everyday carry, and I say everyday carry, obviously I mean everyday carry for the urban survival environment situation. It's definitely not how I dress or carry on a regular basis. So just wanna make that 100% clear. Now, that being said, let's go ahead and start out with the base layer. Now, in colder environments like it is now, even here in Florida, the temps get down to the 20s, and you can actually catch hypothermia, which means you're sweating a whole lot, you're exerting yourself, you're running around in an urban environment, and you're getting cold and clammy in the process. And that's not good, and then it's windy and cold, and everything just sucks. So you wanna avoid that at all costs. And how do you do that? Well, with a good pair of thermals. I got my rash guard right here, and that's the top. And then I have these thermal bottoms right here, which is the uh, base layer, or the base 2.0 and um, by Under Armour. Oh, also, obviously, I need something for my head. This is my old issue beanie from way back. Eons go, Polar Tech. Got some pretty decent moisture wicking with it. I'm either gonna have this or there's gonna be something on my head. It's either gonna be this, a baseball cap style or a boonie hat, whatever is good for the environment and the situation. So there's that, right? And then of course, you know, I'm gonna have something on top of that. Now what I've chosen to go with is this old kind of cold weather issue shirt baggy thing. Um, that used to fit me, but I used to be a little chunkier than what I am now. So uh, that on top of all of that, right? Oh yeah, I also got, how could I forget my lucky t-shirt? That goes over the rash guard. And shout out to my friend who designed this beautiful, beautiful illustration of the Dogue. So I got that, that's my lucky t-shirt. And then of course I have a pair of pants. These are my 511 Tactical Defender pants. These things are incredible. They got a few extra pockets in here and um, don't look overtly tactical. They just look like a regular pair of blue jeans, but they are, um, you know, they got like the double reinforced crotch and lots of flexibility and room for movement. And um, they're pretty much indestructible. I've been wearing them for a couple years now. Also to go with all of this, you need yourself a quality riggers belt but you probably don't wanna spend $100 on it or something outrageous, unless that's literally like your full-time job you need one of these for, right? So I found this, this is by Wolf Tactical. Picked this up a couple years ago, 20, 30 bucks. Really, uh, really not too shabby at all. And a great belt, and I wear it all the freaking time. Now, here's one of the biggest changes to this entire setup, and that is the footwear. These are Ultima Maritime Assault Boots. And yes, I guess if I wear these, or you do, or anybody does, it basically makes you into a Navy SEAL. Just joking, of course not. But a lot of the uh, cool high-speed operator guys apparently utilize these, and they're pretty cool. Instead of having a heavy boot that weighs like three or four pounds, uh, you have a lightweight, basically uh, Converse style shoe in terms of the design with drain holes on each side, right there and right there, a pretty grippy bottom, 
comfortable, breathable, and overall just a really good shoe and lightweight, means that, which means you can run pretty fast in them. Now, I wouldn't advise these for a situation where you might need steel toes or you or sharp stepping on sharp objects might be a problem. You probably want to upgrade to something a little bit better, but for the past couple years or however long I've had these, they've been great in wilderness and urban environments. Okay, we can't forget about a good quality pair of work gloves. You saw inside some of those areas, there's broken glass everywhere, there's exposed wires. Definitely want a good quality pair of gloves. And you also want some eye protection. These bad boys are not cheap, but they're basically indestructible. I'm going in, I guess, about a year of having these. I wear them all the time. And for the urban environment, look at all that coverage, look at all that protection. Can't go wrong, right? So, got those, and then what do I, like, tool-wise, what do I have on my person? Well, I've been uh, trying out and using this Annihilate knife. This was sent to me for review a while back by the same company that sent me the tactical shovel, which actually turned out to be a really good deal. I was a little suspect on the in the beginning, you know, I'm like, ah, what is this, this, like, ah. Uh, too much, but it actually worked out really good. If you want to check out that video of the tactical shovel in operation, I hopefully remember to put the suggestion up right here. But with that being said, this knife is full tang. It's got a 90 degree spine, a really um, grippy scales there. Check that out. Pretty nice, huh? And uh, overall, pretty good knife. I didn't use it last time I was out because it was probably would have made a little bit too much noise, but pretty decent blade, I'm enjoying that. And um, yeah, but if I only have one blade, that means I have no blade. So I have a backup Spyderco Tenacious folder, pretty solid folder, been using this guy for years, locks up really tight and never had an issue with it. So I always have two blades on me. I might have, you know, another, smaller full tang knife on me ideally folders can sometimes they can cause problems but today uh, or last time i was out i'm like yeah i'm just gonna roll the folder got that um, oh of course high viz big light, lighter can't go wrong i got the leatherman skeletal right here this is my favorite multi-tool it's not clunky it's not heavy it opens up it's super lightweight and has all the basic functions that i want in a multi-tool then Talking about keeping track of time and all that good stuff, I got the good old G-Shock Casio. I had not had one of these in a long time. You know, wearing the smart watches, you kind of forget about these types of watches, but sure, a smart watch is cool, but in an urban environment, without any way to recharge it, it's worthless, right? So you definitely want a good quality watch, like what we have here, and then, as an added precaution, this is like just being super safe. If I'm in an area where I'm not really familiar or, you know, it's just nice to have a compass on your wrist, okay? This is a Suntu. You can also kind of uh, shoot a bit of a bearing with it. And it's just nice, quick way to make sure, yeah, I'm headed north. Okay, cool, no, whoa, whoa, I gotta turn around and go south, right? So having that's pretty nice. Uh, what else we got here? Oh, paracord bracelet, of course. Yes, a handcuff key. Hopefully never have to use it in real life. <laughs> that would not be good. And then I also have a covering for my face, which can also double for a ton of other uses in pretty much a wilderness or a uh, wilderness environment. Or wilderness environment, did I say wilderness? Yes, wilderness or urban environment. All right, let's go ahead and move on. You've seen the everyday carry guys. Let's go ahead and break out everything into the categories and have a look at what we got going on here. I think we'll go ahead and get started with my tech kit. Yeah, so there was a lot going on there in my everyday carry. You really don't realize what that looks like until you dump everything out and really look at it. And I didn't even include, like, you know, a look at the squad automatic heavy machine gun I carry with me for my everyday carry. So we'll have a look at that later. But that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the first item in the survival kit, and this is my tech kit. Now, you know, you might say, well, God, you know, it's, ur it's urban survival, SHTF, why do you need a tech kit and stuff like that? Well, there is possible, you know, possibility there may still be some sort of infrastructure out there. There may, there there may still be wireless access points I can connect to. Maybe I have a burner phone and I need to, you know, activate it and jump on a wire, you know, like on some sort of wireless network to send some messages, you know. So who knows what this situation is like, but I'm always going to have something like this because it also doubles as charging capability for uh, my camera batteries and other related filming gear. So what we got in here, we got this super handy 10,000 milliampere hour charger really just fits in the palm of your hand really nice there then i have a whole bunch of secret super important data on this vault this usb vault 
I thought it was a pretty cool design and you know, I was like, oh cool. Dig it, check it out. Boom, there's your USB drive, right? So pretty neat, thought it was a cool idea, so I picked it up, thought it was nice. Got some important data on there. And then over here on this side of the pouch, I have a USB foldable wall plug right there. And then some related charging cables, one for the phone, one for the camera, and one other USB related charging cable. So that's it for the tech kit. Not much going on there and um, yeah, I really don't need, really don't need much else. Okay, we'll go ahead and move on to the hygiene kit. And you may say, what, a hygiene kit? How is that related to survival? Well, I like to stay clean. And if I'm dirty in an urban envir environment, you know, let's say you're getting cuts and scratches and you got cut with a piece of glass or, or rusty nails or whatever, it's a dirty environment. I wanna stay clean and prevent infection and also keep morale up. So to that end, I have a fairly extensive hygiene kit. Take this pretty seriously. Let's have a look at what we got going on here. So I have microfiber, microfiber, Sea to Summit towel. I got some camp soap, right? Deodorant, dental floss, toothpaste, toothbrush, dry compressed towels, important, razor, fingernail clippers, and also a pair of tweezers. And then back here in this other zippered pocket, I got just a nice big Ziploc bag. I could put some dirty clothes in there or who knows. But it's nice to always have a Ziploc bag around. And it looks like, is there anything else in here? Let's see. Oh yeah, here's some more, uh, some more like pocket body wash camp style towels that are infused with soap. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for this. Oh, the other thing to mention is it is, it is Molly compatible on the back or you can just pop out the hanger like so and hang it up. So not bad. This is made by LA Police Gear and Okay, up next is medical, and this is pretty damn important, right? You want two different types of medical kits. You want the basic medical kit for the boo-boos, the scratches, you know, um, the issues with your feet, the blisters, and all that kind of stuff. So I've kind of upgraded this one a little bit. This is the Base Med Advanced First Aid Kit by Live the Creed. I've added uh, some medications in here, and I've also added uh, some moleskin for my feet because, you know, blisters suck, and if your feet get jacked up, you're not going anywhere, so that's not cool. So I would like to take good care of my feet. And then for things worse than that, like puncture wounds, gunshots, stab wounds, uh, large cuts, stuff like that, I have an actual trauma kit. This is by Live the Creed as well, and it's an everyday carry kit. Look at that. Look at how small that is. Literally can fit right in your pocket, and you have all the basic life-saving trauma-related equipment in here. Everything from, what do we got here? We got quick clot, right? We got gloves, we got bandages, we got SWAT T tourniquet, and some assorted goodies in here as well. So I like to have that, and then that pretty much that, that pretty much covers it for the medical kit. I like to keep it pretty simple and as compact as possible. Because the idea here is if I actually did have to break this out and use it, it's gonna like keep me alive long enough to get to proper medical care if that's available. So that's all I'm interested in is um, you know that golden window, that golden hour, staying alive long enough to get some professional care. Because uh, let me be clear, I am not a medical professional in any sort of capacity. I know enough to do this and that's about it. No matter what environment you are in, wilderness or urban, you're always gonna need some sort of ability to create fire. So once again, just like with a medical kit, I like to keep this as simple as possible. I have big lighter, high vis If I drop it, it's easy to find. I have that carried on my purse and you guys saw that already. I also have a Swedish light my Swedish light my fire fire steel yes um, I've had these things for years give off a great spark ferro rod lasts forever it never pits and yeah I just rely on that and then I also have this exotac match case with some tinder this is jute twine with um, a bit of wax on it and then also underneath the jute twine I have some Vaseline soaked cotton balls so tinder and two ways to make fire. Keep it simple, and yeah, you don't really need to get much more into that. 
So you see this theme, right? This keep it simple theme that I try to keep throughout all of my gear. And sometimes things can get complicated and that's what it started to happen with my water purification kit. It started to get kind of complicated. I started having lots of pieces and parts and components because I was doing multi-day trips. But with this kit that you're seeing right here, I really only intend it for use at a maximum of three days in the field, maybe less, okay? Maybe more like 48 hours. And I wanted to think about urban water sources. How are those different than wilderness water sources? Well, the main thing is most likely they're gonna have contamination from heavy metal, uh, metals, chemicals and stuff like that, right? More so than in a wilderness environment. So I wanted a filter that could handle that. Now I've gotten some suggestions over the years in my YouTube channel, people have commented and said, man, you really need to check out the GeoPress by Grail. Grail? Holy Grail? I don't know. Maybe this is a Holy Grail of water filters, but according to the literature and what I've been able to understand about this filter, it handles heavy metals, chemicals, and all the other kind of nasty stuff that you might want to deal with in an urban environment very, very well. So let's just have a look at it real quick. It's very simple in operation, which is also nice. Woo! All right, so a little bit of water in there. So there you guys see, there is the filter right there on the bottom, right? So the idea is you have a contaminated water source, you fill up from the water source, you put this inside of here, and then you press down like so. And as you do that, fresh water flows into this secondary container that I'm pressing down. Now, when I was reading the reviews on this, some people were complaining and said, oh my goodness, it's too hard to press down. And to those people I say, maybe you need to hit the gym a little bit more or just don't share that. But the only downside, that we have here is the fact that filter only lasts for 65 gallons. Now, if I only, uh, only intend to survive in a uh, urban environment for maybe max three days, am I gonna drink 65 gallons? Definitely not, so that's good, but still something to keep in mind. Overall, I like this, and when I pair it with this El Chifo stainless steel cup, I have a way to boil water, it nest, hangs out together real nicely there, and um, yeah, it just works out. Now, I also have another water purification option. This is Chloroflox. This water purification powder says, add to one liter of water. So one liter of water for this tiny little packet. You shake it for one minute, you leave it for three minutes, you swirl for 30 seconds, leave it for seven minutes, and then you filter it through a cotton cloth. Something like, I don't know, maybe this, right? So with these three items, there's my water purification and all I need. Instead of previously, you know, I got the Cnoc bag, I got the Sawyer squeeze in here, I got potable aqua, uh, you know, tablets, you know, maybe I have my Catadin B free. You know, there was a lot of different things going on here, but in this instance, if I just need to be able to filter water and just have it in here and have it on the go, uh, this is gonna work out fine for me. So yeah, so far so good. What do we got next? Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the next category and this is some kind of cool guy gear that you would only pack depending on mission requirements. Like a particular mission might only require that you have this super awesome mirror safety tapper gas mask. Look at the profile on that thing. Super small, packs into my bag, no problem. And that's one reason why I picked it out was I wanted to have a gas mask to carry, but yeah, a gas mask typically is huge. This one, not so much. Now with this guy right here, I have the um, Pecan C filter on here. This handles CN, CS and OC, but there's another filter if you are uh, concerned about like industrial fumes or uh, that, that flu, that flu thing that they've been talking about that's been going around that's been killing a whole bunch of people and they've kind of made a big deal of. You could also deal with that, right? So this is kind of nice to have and I'm happy to have that in my kit. Now, if I'm trying to go all dark, right? Off the grid 100%. I got my burner phone and I got it in my Faraday bag, right? So once it's in here, it's completely offline and there should be no tracking available at all, right? So the Faraday bag blocks all transmission, right? So it keeps everything nice and dead and quiet. So I like that. Maybe that might come in handy in the future, who knows? Now, you saw this in use already, the Vortex spotting scope. I was able to sit in that concealed position and just scan that whole area and see everything around me and see if there's any threats, see anything out of the ordinary. So I love this and the Vortex, what is this? This is the Solo RT. Yeah, I should know by now, I carry this all the damn time. Super handy piece of equipment to have. Not as big as your traditional set of binoculars, not as small as your traditional monocular, monocular, 
but a little bigger, a little beefier, and does the job perfectly. So I got that. But this guy right here, Fleur, right? Thermal imaging scope. If I want to like see, are there, you know, is there is there any hot bodies in that abandoned hotel complex that I need to be aware of? So this thing is really great. It's probably max effects of range if I had to guess. Based on use, it's 100 meters, maybe give or take a little bit. But about 100 meters out, you can pick up heat signatures, no problem. And of course, it depends on the size of the heat signature as well. But having this available is awesome. And unfortunately, my battery wasn't fully charged on this. So by the time I got on site and I was ready to use this, it was a cold day anyways, and the battery had died and that was a real bummer. But I wanna try to put this to use and if I have an opportunity before the video publishes, you'll see some cool B-roll. But that being said, that's a mission particular and, and specific gear per requirements that I pack. Let's go ahead and move on to the next category. Okay, so once again, this is the Paratus by 3V Gear. Retail is about $80 to $100 last time I checked. This is a three-day bag and a highly capable bag and the second one that I have had. Now we look here on the side, we got a pouch, a statement pouch. We got some webbing here, cool. We got the same thing going on over here with more webbing. We got compression straps, two on each side, one here, one here, one here, and one here. And then also right here is where we go ahead and attach that secondary um, rapid deployment pouch that I just showed you guys. And then of course, if you didn't want to do that, we still have all this molly webbing all through here that you can play around with and use to, your, um, to, to whatever your needs are, right? So um, on the back of the backpack, we have nice heavily padded back panel, padded straps, nice and thick and wide, which I like as well. We also have these compression straps that go over the top like so. And we also have a sternum strap right here. And then finally on the bottom, it's up to you. You can take this off or use it. I left it on for right now, but there's a heavy duty waist strap right here, which you can utilize as well. So that's basically the outside of the pack. You know what? Let's go ahead and do a quick measurement here and we'll see rough idea on height. We're talking, you know, about 21 and a half inches and then width overall, we're talking about 15 and a half inches. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and have a look inside this first compartment up front right here. And this is one thing that I would change about this bag, it being all black. It's really hard to see your tools in here because generally speaking, your tools are also black. So having a contrasting color pattern uh, panel right here would be a nice touch, but overall it works. They got some organizational compartments where you can put some tools. There's also this mesh pocket right here where you can just kind of like a general catch all. And then this goes pretty deep down in here. So pretty nice. There's also a key hanger right here or hang whatever you want with that. So we got that going on, YKK zippers, zipper bowls, and also this storm flap right here, which is pretty nice. Keeps those uh, zippers nice and clean and free from debris. And now the main compartment, there's a lot of space in here. Let's see. If I put it over my entire head, that's about how big it is. <laughs> I can fit half my body in there, right? Um, so yeah, lots of space in there. There is uh, just basically like this big pocket right here. You can put a laptop or a hydration pouch in there, hydration bladder, and a hanger for your hydration bladder. Cool, a little port to run the hose out. And um, yeah, just a whole bunch of empty space. Now, what I would like to see in here is maybe like a mesh organizational pocket right here or some other pocket in this space would be kind of nice. Um, that's the only thing I can think of offhand with this pack. Overall, it's a great pack. It's the second one I've gotten from 3B Gear and uh, top quality. Never had anything break, tear, damage, or any other issues with their pack. And if I did, it's all good because they have a warranty. So really can't go wrong with it. Now, what would I change about this pack aside from having some high biz right here? I would probably angle these compression straps just a little bit. They work better on an angle versus straight across and that would better secure this pouch which is prone to kind of flap and flop around a little bit. Um, but aside from that, I think the pack is pretty much good to go. One thing that would be cool, maybe they, if they offer this as an add-on, is like an upgrade of these zipper pulls to like fire tender zipper pulls. Might be nice. I went ahead and swapped out and did uh, one of my own but it doesn't uh, didn't turn out too aesthetic. But that's about it. Overall, great pack. Like I said, it's my second one. And right now, I'm rocking it for the Urban Survival Kit.
So now let's pull in the shelter kit. And this is definitely a work in progress. I'm not gonna say it's perfect because I haven't had a chance to get this particular kit out in the field yet. But I always go with my hammock. I can never go wrong with my hammock. So in urban environment, why not try to stick with a hammock? This is my Hennessy hammock. You guys have seen this before. It's got that rear like bottom opening so you can get in it like that. It's super simple, much easier than zippers and less prone to failure because I've torn zippers on hammocks before. So this guy is a good to go option. Seems like it so far, but like I said, I haven't put this into real use out there yet in an urban environment. Also got this poncho slash tarp. Now, will this be big enough to cover the hammock sufficiently? No idea, but we'll find out. Also, got some paracord. Always gonna have some cordage. Also, <laughs> tick and insect repellent. I just keep this in my, like, you know, like my space with all this gear because I'm always using this, right? So once I get to the shelter site, I like to keep this inside of my hammock and get all sprayed down and good to go. So, um, got that. Oh, yeah, of course, got, got myself a shamog. I threw that in there. That's kind of nice. You can lay that down the ground, sort through your gear. Also got a few trash bags. Ideally, you would use a trash bag liner. Those are much heavier duty and much larger. I just don't have any more available right now, so trash bag it is. And then I have handy dandy rain cover. This can obviously use, be used to change the color of my backpack from black to camo, but also protect it from the elements. And then when I'm at the location where I wanna unpack and maybe remain overnight, I can unpack all my gear into this and keep it off the ground and portable. So that's the shelter kit. Obviously there's more stuff that needs to be done to it. I can throw uh, my Wooby in here. I can throw in a, um uh, one of those um, Mylar blankets. Uh, I got an SOL like bivy sack I can use. Lots of different options, but I'm gonna have to sort through that and see exactly how I wanna pack that out. And the only way I'll know is by getting out and trading with it. But for right now, this is what we got. Up next, we're gonna talk about navigation and maps and compasses, right? Which is pretty damn important. In here, I have topo map. I got building maps. I have some city maps and just things that are re relevant to an urban environment, right? So I also have my trusty primary compass right here. I have my field book for notes and oh yeah, another city map in there. That's a trail map. They're like this trail system that goes through the Jacksonville area where they basically paved over some railroad lines, which is pretty nice. I actually did a video of um, Urban Survival, my ultralight Urban Survival Kit, and I was on those rail lines. You wanna check that one out? I'll put a suggestion up there. But anyways, uh, we also have um, some pencils, pens, right in the rain, and um, some map-related writing devices. But overall, this is, this is what I carry with me. I might slim this down. I might not carry as much stuff in here. It really just depends on the mission at hand. But uh, for that environment and not being super fam familiar with it, that area, I really wanted like all of my navigational stuff because if I had to run and like hide or escape or something like that, or got chased by some angry people, I wanna get lost and not know where the hell I was at. So the navigation is a pretty important one. Let's go ahead and move on to, um, hmm, what are we gonna do next? Let's go ahead and talk about food. Yeah, that's, that's also important. Staying like uh, fueled up in a survival situation so you don't die. So this is one area where I'm always kind of making tweaks and improvement to how I choose to feed myself depending on the environment that I'm in. So first of all, in an urban survival situation, the environment may not be permissive to, for you to be like, running around, doing bushcraft stuff, making fires, cooking food, all that. So I keep that in mind as I pack this out. So do the same, and we'll go ahead and have a look at what we got going on in here. First of all, this is a Magpul DACA bag, right? Got this clear front, Basically airtight, waterproof. Don't want animals getting in your food. Not cool. Let's see what we got going on here. So I always like to either have a stripped MRE or something like this. This Mountain House meal, you get almost 800 calories. A lot of good uh, quality food here or the MRE, whatever the case is. My main focus is lots of calories, lots of fat, lots of carbs, and yes, indeed, some protein as well. So I'm always gonna have something like that. I'm always gonna have some Uncle Ben's ready rice. Never a bad idea. That is just like stupid simple to cook. You need like a little drop of water and you got a lot of good rice. And if you pair this with like maybe some canned chicken or something else, you got yourself a proper meal. We got that. Then on the topic of carbs, oatmeal. Instant oatmeal, can't go wrong with this. You usually have two or three packets of these. 
And then also right here, this is a energy gel. I started using this brand after researching how endurance athletes like fuel and hydrate themselves on the go, right? Kind of makes sense. They want to stay lightweight, they want to stay mobile, but they want to have food and hydration on them that's going to keep them like moving forward, right? So they're talking like 100 mile, you know, runs or tracks or stuff like that for the ultra marathon people and endurance crowd. So I'm going to have one of these and then probably like, you know, it just depends. I, I, I might have some beef jerky in there. I might have a chocolate cream pie from the gas station. I might have some fresh fruits, some fresh fruit or uh, fresh foods in general that I might eat the first day that I'm out, right? Um, I, I, I might consider mixing together like a bunch of like dried fruit and nuts. And like really like Brazil nuts, for example, have tons and tons of calories in them. So there's lots of different ways I can lay this out for sure. But one of the biggest changes was that stove. You saw the stove in action. I was kind of cold and I was having issues like putting it together. So I want something that is stupid simple to use that requires no assembly and what better option but the good old S-Bit pocket stove. It just opens right up, uses the same fuel source, and I'm good to go. So I flip back to that guy, and then I did have, uh, whew, where is it? It's laying around here somewhere. But anyway, I had, uh, oh yeah, right here. I had the fork and spoon combo, ditched that, and just went ahead and went with my good old trusty spork. Can't go wrong there. So that's kind of a quick look at the food. That might change and vary depending on what I'm doing, how long I'm gonna be out. But generally speaking, I wanna be able to have at least 1,500 high quality calories of carbs, proteins, and fats throughout the course of one day. And I think that's reasonable for like a, you know, for a kit like this. You can obviously add in some more food to extend your range a little further. So let's go ahead and get started here. We got the Baco Laplander Folding Saw. I've had this thing for years. Never broken a blade. Can't say the same for Silky, even though the Silky blades are more effective and cut faster. This is definitely more durable. So don't wanna have to worry about replacing blades. So I just go with this guy. Got linesman pliers. You saw those in action. Super effective and much smaller than like, where are they in here? I think they're in here somewhere. Let's see. Oh yeah, see look, so check it out. I used to carry these, swapped out for these, right? Common sense. These don't even work that well. These, super effective, and uh, you can literally fit them in your back pocket if you had to. So I'm gonna have those with me. Now, the newest addition, which I have not even had a chance to use yet, is this super cool tactical pry bar. Check that out, guys. I've wanted to get my hands on something like this. I wanted a pry bar, but then I wanted other functionality in it. So I kind of stumbled on this on Amazon. I'm like, whoa, that is a really good deal. So hopefully by the time you guys see this video, I'll be able to throw some cool B-roll up uh, right now of me using this. But for now, haven't had an opportunity to actually flex it and use it in an urban environment. Up next is knife. I gave you guys a quick look at this when we were looking at the everyday carry, but this is the Annihilate knife. It is full tang, 90 degree spawn super comfortable grip and it has uh one of those smashing things right there and um overall a good knife uh tanto as well and i guess maybe in a pinch it might be possible to use this as some sort of pry bar i don't know but uh, overall a great knife the same people who um sent me the tactical folding shovel i did a video on last year sent me this knife for review and so far been good to go. What else? Oh yes, of course. <laughs> Can't forget about the Leatherman Skeletal. You guys saw a little bit of this with the Everyday Carry, but I just wanted to shout out again to this since it is a tool and it's lightweight, super capable, and my favorite multi-tool. And then of course, the folding knife, Spyderco Tenacious. Gonna have that on me for damn sure. So there, those, those are the tools. Let's go ahead and have a look at this tool bag that I've set up, which is pretty neat and it's definitely probably almost entirely specific for an urban survival situation. Okay, so there's my tool bag all sorted out here. I think I got everything. So let's go ahead and have a look. So the first thing I wanna mention, which is probably one of the coolest things in upgrades, is a whole bunch of special keys, right? So I got everything here from a Ford Fleet key, you know, that might work on like older, you know, like Caprice or police style vehicles. I have a whole bunch of these keys right here. Then we got an elevator key, we got a handcuff key, we got some like office cabinet keys in here, which I thought was pretty cool to have. But then also some heavy equipment keys, right? So heavy equipment, you know, maybe I need to uh, be rolling through the post-apocalyptic landscape in my heavy moving machine, like of the earth mover thing or whatever. I don't do much construction, but 
those machines are pretty big and they look like a lot of fun and people seem to like to drive them around town and smash stuff so hey why not have the ability to maybe drive one of those so i got a whole bunch of cool keys right here now what else we got going on so you saw there in that abandoned hotel like complex right there was some doors the doors were still on could not be used the locks were damaged but that's where you have your portable door lock now this door lock, I haven't had a chance to really try it out in like the real world yet, but from what I understand, the way you can use this and you can just like have a like a jam in the door so nobody can get in. So you could secure a building that had a damaged door probably with something like this. I'm gonna try it out, see, see how it works. So we got that bad boy. Then I have some field repair equipment in here. I got everything from like duct tape and buckles and other related things that might go bust on my gear, which I figured was not a bad idea to have. And then uh, there's also a sewing kit in here as well. Then we also have um, some utility duct tape stuff right here. We also have the good old Silcock key. Now the Silcock key, you can either like not pay attention and get the really heavy one, or you can get a lightweight one like this. So I would definitely suggest the lightweight one and save some weight, right? So there's that. And then, hey, by the way, guys, I've upgraded to uh, Urban Survival Batman mode. So I have a grappling hook. I don't know how it works. I did want to deploy it out there at that hotel to get on that roof, but, I just thought it might be a little too sketchy. So this is something I definitely want to try out and see if there's any function in having this. Um, who knows? But yeah, I think that pretty much covers it for the tools and uh, the tool bag. And yeah, you see there's some paracord here. I always have paracord like sorted around throughout my pack for, good God, tons of different uses. So let's go ahead and move on to the next category. Up next is signal and comms. And here's where I made a pretty big upgrade to this kit. Before I had my UV5R Baofeng, basically the budget prepper's best friend radio. But last year I teamed up with Ham Radio Prep and I really started learning a little bit more about radios, frequencies and output and transmission and all that kind of good stuff. So I, taking that knowledge, I ended up upgrading to the UV S9 Plus by Baofeng. This has, I think, double the wattage double the transmit power of the UV5R and um, a longer battery life as well and a slightly slimmer profile. And of course, I ditched the rubber duck antenna which is basically worthless and I upgraded to the Abri AR771 VHF UHF antenna. So having a radio, always a good idea. Then uh, if we're talking about maybe lighting, we got two chem sticks, red and yellow and these can be used for so many different purposes. Maybe you need a little night light hung up so you can see your way around when you get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. Maybe you set these up around a perimeter. Maybe you use these as a uh, way to signal for help. Uh, maybe you use these to actually see in the dark. Who knows, there's lots of different options for these. So I always throw a couple chem sticks in my gear. Then, this is pretty cool. This is basic, this right here, that right there guys, is basically this in a very small, slim package. Check that out. This is the Visipad. And this bad boy, all you have to do to make it work is you just bend it, fold it, massage it a little bit. See those are instructions right there? And you have this nice, soft green glow that can you can use to read maps or do other things where you wanna be super discreet with your light source. So I got these guys right here. And then if I wanted to have a little bit more light on the situation, like I'm clearing a room or I really need to see and flood this space with some light, I'm gonna go with the WowTac BSS V4. This is the Black Scout branded flashlight. And um, it's a great flashlight, USB rechargeable. Got the tail switch right here. Also has another switch and it will also tell you when it's running low on battery which right now, is it running low on battery? I saw the red light pop up. Yeah, I think it's running low on battery. USB rechargeable, battery lasts forever. I haven't charged this thing in like six months and used it quite a bit. So definitely gonna have one of these, but also I'm also gonna have a headlamp. This is my Tactica Petzl. We got the RGB function going on here. And overall, this headlamp is absolutely incredible. I love the multicolor options. And um, for anything but room clearing or where you need lots of light, the headlamp is gonna be like basically your best friend. And this is uh, AAA battery powered and these batteries, don't remember the last time I replaced these either. They just 
keep lasting. So, so is this kit perfect? Obviously not. The cycle continues on and on. You pack the bag, you go train with it, you dump the bag, you resort it, you change things out, you pack it again, and you head back out. So for me, there's definitely some work that needs to be done. I want to spend a legit at least one night or two nights out in some cold weather. You know, it's going to be down in the 30s here soon, I think next week. So I like to get out in the urban environment overnight with this kit. I also want to put, put that fluoroscope to more use because you can imagine being able to sit back in a concealed position and scope out that abandoned hotel complex and really truly see if there's any heat signatures in that area. It's good for about 100 to 150 meters. So I want to get that done and knocked out. And then also I want to have some more time with that tactical pry bar. And ideally like the dream situation would be able to find some sort of abandoned structure that's safe to remain in overnight. That's the idea. So we'll see, we'll figure it out, and we'll get there. But that's what my future's looking like. And you, I wanna know about you. What do you think about urban survival? Is it feasible, is it possible? Let me know down there in the comments. And since you're watching this video, I know you're into urban survival. Most likely, it's reasonable to think. So you're gonna to wanna to check out the next video that's coming up in the next like five, 10 seconds. And this video is my urban survival scavenger kit version 2.0 and this is a lot of good tools, a lot of good information in this kit and you can see me exploring a lot of abandoned structures in my general area. So you're gonna wanna check that out for sure. I'll see you guys next time, hopefully on Gab or on Rumble. Cheers and thanks for the support.